Good evening. We want to thank you as always for uh, taking the time to watch tonight's video. Uh, I want to ask you to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 3 this evening. Mark chapter 3. And I want to talk to you about uh, humility. How do you know if you are a humble person? It's hard to claim humility, right? Because at times if you claim humility, you sound more prideful than humble. Uh, so how can we know if we're humble? What are maybe some markers that can show us, hey, you know, this is a sign that maybe I am living a humble life or, you know, I'm lacking some of these signs, these indicators in my life of humility. So maybe I need to make some changes in order to be more of a humble person. I want to talk about these things tonight uh, while we examine the life of our Savior, Jesus. And so in Mark 3, Jesus' popularity is just gaining more and more. It's increasing, it's growing more and more uh, each and every day at this point. People are hearing about the things that Jesus is doing. A lot of people came from all over to hear Jesus and what he would teach. A lot of people came from all over to be healed by Jesus or to watch him heal someone else or to bring someone that they cared about to him to be healed. And then a lot of people came to Jesus uh, to do both of those things, to hear the message and to receive healing or to witness healing. And so you have the popularity of Jesus growing. And I want you to listen to some of the terminology, some of the language used here in Mark 3 uh, to describe how Jesus was feeling and to describe the crowd that was surrounding him to give us an idea of his popularity. And then as we get to the end, we're going to notice a phrase um, that kind of lets us know a little bit uh, about his humility that kind of lets us see his humility we'll make some connections there and then we're going to go over to Matthew and then go over to Philippians and that'll kind of be our lesson tonight so let's think about the life of Jesus at this point his popularity watch as his popularity is increasing watch how he handles this situation with his popularity growing and then we'll examine that and try to see if we can do some evaluation of self and see if we are being humble in our lives so Mark 3, verse 7. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. So there's this giant crowd of people that's following him, and from Judea, and Jerusalem, and Edomia, and beyond the Jordan, and those from Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. So you have these, these two multitudes, these two groups of people that are coming together, and they basically merge to become this one massive group of people all coming to Jesus to be healed by him, to hear him, to just be around him. A lot of them just trying to touch his garment. You remember the woman with the issue of blood that she just said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And that's how a lot of them felt. If I could just touch Jesus, that would be enough. So the crowd is there. There's two crowds that kind of merge together and they're coming from all over to, to see Jesus. Verse nine. So he told his disciples that a small boat should be kept ready for him. Why? Because of the multitude, lest they should crush him. Now, if you've ever seen videos, uh, maybe you've seen uh, the, the celebrities on, on the red carpet or coming out of places in just normal life situations, a restaurant or other things, and the crowds that flock to them and just try to reach out and 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 touch them or get a high five. I think of, of you see a lot of kids and, and families that will wait after uh, sports game, or after like basketball games, after uh, football games to, to see if they can get something signed, to see if they can just get a high five from their favorite player. And it's like, if you give me a high five, it's like, I'm never, I'm not going to shower for four months. Like I'm so stoked. I'm so excited that I got to touch the hand of my favorite athlete of my favorite celebrity and that's kind of how Jesus was here to these people they they just wanted to be near him they just wanted to touch him they were just coming in and and they were to the point where he was like we need a boat ready so that they don't crush us so that we're not overtaken by the crowd his popularity is just skyrocketing verse 10 for he healed many so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him and the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. 
Now, as you look at some of the things that happen here, it says he healed many of them, uh, as many as had afflictions. So, and they pressed in to touch him, as we talked about, you know, they're just trying to reach out and touch him, just because that's all, in their minds, that's all they need to do for healing, because that's how powerful Jesus is, how, how powerful he was to them, and what they had heard, and what they had seen. And so, that, I heard it put this way, that the afflictions there, as we as we look at the word, it's a similar word used to like scourging and how um, and whipping and how that damages your flesh. That's kind of how the afflictions that they were facing, the illnesses they were facing, that's what it was doing to their bodies. It was ravaging their bodies. And they were reaching out to touch Jesus to be healed of this disease that's just ravaging, that's tearing them apart, ripping them apart. And it says that you have these unclean spirits in verse 11. And then the phrase, whenever they saw him, that's not just at this occasion whenever they saw him, but that's this something that every time they saw him, what happened? They fell down before him and they cried out saying, you are the son of God. You are the son of God. You are the son. Of they just cried over and over. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. You say, well, Cody, where do we see humility in all of this? So you see the popularity of Jesus and how it is growing uh, more and more. I would say that we see the humility of Jesus here when you look at verse 12. Remember, these unclean spirits are crying out. They're not just saying it, but it's it's like shouting it. It's this cry out, you're the son of God. You're the son of God. You're the son of God. All the time, every time they would see him, that's what they would do. And Jesus warns them that they should not make him known. And you might say, well, why does he want why does he want them not to do that? Why does he not want them to tell others about him? Jesus did that on other occasions, right? He would heal someone, and then he would tell that person, now don't go tell anyone about this. Keep it to yourself. Why? Why did he do that? And at times we say, you know, he did that uh, partly because it wasn't his time to be revealed yet. And so he was trying to keep that from happening too soon. Um, but I think we can also connect another passage to kind of help us see maybe, yes, that's part of it, but there's some other reason why Jesus would tell people at certain situations, hey, calm down. Don't go tell anyone else about this. Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. And we're going to pick up in verse 15 of Matthew 12. And this is coming from the prophet Isaiah. Verse 15, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known. Okay, so there we see that phrasing again. Why? Verse 17, That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. Hmm. Verse 20, a bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. Verse 19, he will not quarrel or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the the streets. It was part of prophecy for Jesus to humble himself and to not uh, be made known in that way. And that's why he would tell people at certain situations, don't tell anyone else. It wasn't time yet for others to know. That's part of it. Another part of it is it was part of prophecy. It's not time for others to know. And Isaiah prophesied that my name will not be in the streets in that way. And, and so Jesus has this humility. Because if you think about it, when crowds gather around and, and you're healing people and a lot of good is happening and people want to be near you and they want to hear you and they, they just want to touch your, your shoulder or your, your garment to, to receive healing, people are just flocking to you. For us, it would be very easy to enjoy the attention and maybe puff ourselves up and say, well, look at what I've done and look at, at all the people coming to hear me and to see me and to want to be near me. And so Jesus gives us this very powerful image of humility and we see a source of humility here and then we see signs of it. So I want to show you the source of humility for us and then after we talk about the source of humility, 
then we're going to talk about some signs of humility. And all of that's going to come from Philippians. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. And as we're going to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Philippians 2, you remember in James 4 where it talks about humble, humbling yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. A, a song that we sing in, in youth groups and in congregations all over uh, the world is it, it, a powerful song of humility. Um, and so in thinking of humility, let's look at the source. In, in Philippians 2, picking up in um, verse 1, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. So here you have this talk of humility. And now let's show let, let's look at the source of humility, picking up in verse four, or excuse me, verse five, and we see it in the life of Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery uh, to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. You see the word mind or mindset mentioned three to four times, depending on your translation here in these verses. Humility is a mindset. It's a way of thinking about oneself. And so here we're told to think the way that Jesus thought. Well, how did Jesus think? As we kind of look at the source of temptation, I want you to, uh, in your homes, as you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, to finish this sentence. Um, he, in talking about Jesus, he emptied what? He emptied himself. Finish this sentence. He humbled who? Himself. He emptied himself. He humbled himself. The source of humility, it's a mindset. The source of humility is choice. We choose to be humble. Jesus chose to empty himself. Jesus chose to humble himself. And you and I make choices every day whether or not we will humble ourselves so that God may lift us up. If I am to be humble, if I want to be humble, if I desire humility, then I must choose humility. It starts with choice. And so before we go any further, I just want you to realize that point. That if you want to be humble, you have to choose it. It's not just something that happens. You have to determine that you're going to be humble. And then in, in moments when you can make choices where you esteem others better than yourself, where you lift others up and, and put them before yourself and put their needs before your needs, in those moments you have a chance to choose humility. Determine to be humble. Choose to be humble and work on having a mindset of a person who is humble. And then there are signs, signs of humility. And you see this in verses 6 through 8. So a source of humility, the source of humility, is choice. You choose every day. So right now, if you're struggling with humility, are you determining, are you choosing to be humble? Or are you just saying that you want to be humble? You have to make choices to be humble. And then if you want to step back and do an honest assessment of your life and say, am I a humble person without bragging on myself and without sounding prideful? How can I determine if I'm humble? I want to give you some indicators, some tests that you can put your life beside. And if your life responds to these tests in a positive way, you're humble. And if it doesn't, then maybe you need to make some adjustments 
to try to be more humble and make the choice of being humble. The first one is self-denial. I step away from myself. I realize it's not about me anymore. Humility makes me say it's not about me. Selfishness and pride and arrogance and worldliness makes me say it's not about you. But humility makes me say it's not about me. And I must choose to think that way. And I must choose to say that and to live that, that it's not about me. All of the sin in the world today, it is in the world today because of one man and one woman who wanted to be like God. And in moments of weakness, we let humility slip away and we choose other things. We must choose humility. And in doing so, we have to deny self. So if you want to know if you're a humble person, I ask you this. Are you practicing self-denial on a daily basis? Self-denial can look like many different things. It's not just saying, I'm not going to have another chocolate chip cookie. I'm not going to drink, for me, another soda. Uh, I'm not going to drink another Coke or another Dr. Pepper, another Mountain Dew. Humility and, and this idea of self-denial connecting with it is this idea of there are times when I deny myself so that I can more effectively serve someone else, so that I can put someone else's needs uh, above my own at the time. And that's what we want to think about with self-denial. Do I do that? When someone is in need, and I've had a long day at work, and it's been a long week, and I'm tired, but I know someone's in need, do I find strength in those moments to deny self and to help the person in need, even though I'm tired? When I've had a busy month, and on a particular Saturday, there is um, a cleanup day around the building at the church building, wherever I attend. It's a Saturday where I have an opportunity to enjoy being at home, and I don't have anything else planned, and the kids don't have ball games, and I don't have to work. I'm all caught up, caught up on everything. And in moments like that, are we choosing to deny self in order to help out others? to come and spend time on a Saturday that we thought would just be sitting around doing nothing to clean up the building and do things. It's stuff like that that helps us see if we're working on denying ourselves. In certain situations, uh, do we seek to win arguments um, or do we just deny that desire to be right at times and, and humbly step back and realize that, that being right is not as important is the relationship with that person in that particular moment and about that particular topic. It's things like that we have to think about. If I want to know if I'm a humble person, ask yourself, how often do you deny yourself in order to serve others in a more effective way? And if there are very rare occasions where you deny self in order to more effectively serve someone else, then maybe that's an area you need to work on in order to be more humble in your life. Indicator number one is self-denial. And remember, humility is a choice. So if you, if you have these indicators, that means you are choosing them. So number one, choose self-denial. But another indicator, I would say, and it connects with self-denial, is serving others is an indicator. So denying self is not always linked to serving other people necessarily. Um, denying self happens when we deny sin. It, it happens in a lot of areas, but it also happens in areas where we deny what we would want to do in order to help someone who needs our help in a particular situation, and that involves serving others. So choose to, to deny self and then choose to serve other people. Jesus, the scripture tells us, took on the form of a servant. The word translated servant in this passage is doulos or slave. And as we think about that, it's, it's a powerful term in this text. And we are willing to do whatever we can to help other people. And I get, every time I think of service, and I think of being a servant, and I think of connecting it with Jesus, and how he exemplified that and set that example for us to follow, my mind always goes to where he washes the feet of the disciples. And included in those disciples, in the apostles, 
was Peter and Judas, and he washed their feet. He washed the feet of the two men he knew would deny him publicly. He washed the feet of the one who would betray him with a kiss. He washed the feet of another who would deny him three times publicly to others. And then he washed the feet of all of the others that were present as well. What a, what a, a, a sign of humility. What a, an example of humility for us to try to follow today. Jesus denied self and served others. And you can think of many other passages where he served other people. But that just always comes to my mind in his serving of others. And, and also with the uh, posture that he takes in the moment when he's washing their feet. Uh, and that, all, that posture is almost like a posture of, of humbling self as well. And so you see humility there. Indicator number one, am I choosing to deny myself? And indicator number two Am I choosing to serve other people? Those are two things that will help me determine if I'm actually a humble person or if I need to work on some things to be more humble in my life. And the third thing, and this, again, they all connect together. The third indicator is sacrifice. Sometimes when we step away from self and we do so to serve others, it's going to require sacrifice on our parts. Example I talked about earlier of sacrificing uh, the Saturday that you had available to not have plans in order to come and uh, to help clean up the church building or to go and help that friend move. It's interesting. It's always on the Saturdays when nothing kind of is happening that our friends are suddenly moving and we, we find ourselves helping others move on those Saturdays. And, you know, it, in doing that is a great opportunity of service and of denying self because there's other things that you would rather do, and also of sacrificing because there's other things you could be doing, but you're sacrificing that time to help out someone you care about in a moment where they need your help because none of us like to move. Because cleaning up the church building and, and around the church building is not that fun and takes a long time depending on how big the building and property is and depending on how many people show up. And so it's those, and I give those as examples. There's many other examples we can think of but those are some I think of at times where it's easier to think, well, others are going to be there and others will do this and others will do that and not realize that that's a moment for us to strengthen our humility, to realize, you know, I can sacrifice a few hours and go to the building and deny doing some of the things I wanted to do this morning. I can go and do this and help and clean up at the building and have the rest of the day to do other things. This denying of self, this sacrificing of time, in order to help serve others. And those three things all linking together really help us to get this picture of humility. And so if I want to know if I'm a humble person, I, I, I challenge you to think of these three things. Ask yourself, if you want to know if you're a humble person, are you choosing to deny yourself each day? Not always. There, there, obviously, there are things you can choose to do for yourself, and that's fine. But are there moments where you do choose to deny self? in order to effectively serve other people, and you make sacrifices to, to do those things. If you're not willing to make sacrifices for others and to help out others, if you're unwilling to serve others because you think someone else can do it and it's a little bit beneath you, or if you think you know that you want to put yourself above others and you're not willing to deny yourself in those moments, then maybe those are some things you need to work on in order to be a humble person. It's not wrong to, to think you're a humble person. That doesn't make you prideful or arrogant. Um, but we can know we are if we start to kind of put our life beside these, these tests and see if our life is showing um, um, I am actually a humble person. And we do that so that we, re we can realize, you know, I need to make some changes. I, I didn't realize how much I'm not helping others and how much I am focusing on myself. And, and there are times when... I can focus a little less on myself and put others before me. And there, there are times where I can make these sacrifices to help other people. And, and I need to start choosing to do that. All of this goes back to this word of choice. You make choices every day. You chose to watch this video. And I hope it's a choice you're not regretting at this point. But we make choices all of the time. And it's not, it's not any different when it comes to, to humility. 
if we want to be a humble person, which we are called to be, if we want to have the same mindset that Jesus had, which we are called to have that mindset, we need to choose it. We make choices every day to grow. So we choose to deny ourselves in moments where we have opportunity to where we can better serve others if we deny self. We choose to serve others in moments where they need our help and they need service. And we choose to make sacrifices in order to serve others, in order to help out those in need, in order to further the, the, the kingdom uh, here on this earth, in order to help the church grow and to reach out into the community and to impact the lives of people. And so, are you choosing humility? Are you practicing self-denial? Are you practicing service? Are you practicing sacrifice? And if not, then maybe you need to work on those things to, to grow in your faith, to work towards having a mind like Jesus, to be more effective in reaching into the hearts of people with the gospel of Jesus. I hope that something was said tonight that can benefit your life. And I hope that if there's some things that have challenged you, that that, that will help you to make changes uh, to be more effective in your service uh, to Jesus. If you're watching this tonight and you're not a child of God, you've never, uh, you've never been baptized into Jesus and had your sins washed away, I ask you tonight, if, if you know what you need to do, then why are you waiting? And if it's time for you to make that choice and you're ready to make that choice and you're nervous because of everything else going on, you can call my number. Uh, my cell phone number is 850-559-9575. Call that number and we can get together. And, and um, we have a, a baptistry here at Las Casas. I can meet you wherever you need me to meet you. And if you need to be baptized this evening in order to have your sins washed away, in order for God to add you to his church, in order to uh, receive a new name and to uh, to have a new purpose in life and to work to, towards having the mind of Jesus. If you need to be baptized this evening for the remission of your sins, call my number. Uh, we'll get together. We'll do whatever we can do to to make uh, to, to help meet the requirements you need in order of being together, and, and we can baptize you into Jesus this evening. If you're a child of God but you've been struggling with humility, and maybe you didn't realize you were struggling with humility because— to struggle with humility does not mean that you're an arrogant person. It doesn't mean that you have to be overly prideful in order to struggle with humility. And it might just mean that you're headed in the right direction. You just need to work a little hard. Here's the reality. None of us uh, are perfect. And we're all struggling to, to, to be more like Jesus every day. We want to be more like him. We want to be his image uh, in this world to others. And one area where we struggle at times is humility and, and pride and battling with those things. And so to struggle with humility doesn't mean you're prideful. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're a terrible person. It just means that right now that's what you are struggling with. We all have battles that we fight in order to be more like Jesus every day. And so this just might be the battle you're fighting right now. And if that's the case, maybe as a Christian what you need tonight is just prayers, just to maybe have conversation and, and to pray together together. Uh, so that you can realign your focus and, and you can challenge yourself to make the right choices, to choose humility by choosing to deny yourself and choosing to make sacrifices and choosing to serve other people. And maybe that's what you need to know. If that's the case, call my number. We'll pray together. We'll talk a little bit and visit a little bit over the phone. And then we can both uh, work towards together uh, being more like Jesus every day. We can work towards being more humble every day. And I don't want you to gather from all this that you can't do things for, for yourself, that anytime you choose to do something for yourself that you're not being humble. That's not what this lesson is about. But there are times where all of us have chosen self over others. And it was a moment when the better decision would have been to choose others over self. And it's in those kind of moments um, that we need to work on making the right choice. That's the time where we practice denying ourselves. That's the time where we practice making sacrifices in order to practice serving others. And so I don't want you to gather from this that you can never do things for yourself or you're a bad person. Uh, I, I want you to realize that there are times we need to know that the better thing to do and the right thing to do is to deny self, to sacrifice, and to serve others. 
And when we do, that's how we can know I'm growing in my humility and I'm looking more and more like Jesus every day. I hope that something was said that will bless your life tonight. If you have any kind of need whatsoever, please call me. Uh, we thank you, as always, for tuning into these videos. We're encouraged by uh, your willingness to choose to, to come and watch these online, and uh, we really appreciate that. If there's ever anything we can do for you, please let us know. And uh, we are meeting on Sunday mornings right now, so if you're looking to attend somewhere on Sunday mornings, we meet uh, at the Las Casas Church of Christ building here um, at 10 a.m., and uh, it's just for worship service right now. Um, no Bible classes on Sundays. So if you'd love to join us for that, we'd love to have you. 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings uh, as of right now. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, take care and God bless.